The trade deadline is come and gone, and the Colts ended up not making any moves. But there was some information that the Colts were fielding calls. There were people calling the Colts, hoping that they would sell low, and we're going to talk about that. But first, I want to talk about a little bit of injury news, a little bit of stuff from Shane Steichen's press conference today. And what he was talking about was that Juju Brents is not going to practice this week, so we're likely not going to see Juju Brents in Carolina. Braden Smith has a chance to practice, but he's not going to be on the field today. But today, the Colts changed their practice from a fully padded practice to a walkthrough. Shane Steichen said that he wanted to make sure the guys are going to be more fresh. I guess uh, what I heard was that the last four Wednesday practices have all been fully padded practices. So today it's just a walkthrough, and then they'll get into their regular practices on Thursday and Friday. So hopefully we see Braden Smith able to get back on the field on Thursday or Friday. Blake Freeland has gotten a lot of good experience so far, but I think we'd all feel better if we had Braden Smith there on the outside. Somebody else I'm hoping to see back in the lineup this week is going to be Kylan Granson. You know, Drew Ogletree's had a chance to step up, even though we haven't used the tight ends anywhere near as much as we should in this offense, especially with the talent we have at tight end. But Drew Ogletree, you know, doing his thing. But Kylan Granson likely going to be back this week. He was a limited participant in practice last Friday, but was ruled out of the game, still in the concussion protocol. So I assume soon enough he'll get his second practice in, and then he'll be out of the concussion protocol and probably be ready to go Sunday against the Panthers. And then one last note on all this stuff, Shane Steichen said that he did know who's going to be playing at corner on the opposite side of Jalen Jones on Sunday, but he's not going to say anything because if he tells us, then he's telling the other team. So they know who it's going to be. Um, you know, very good chance it could be DJ Baker. There's a chance it could be Amir Speed. We'll see how all that goes. But what we know is that it can't be Troy Brown giving up seven catches on seven targets for 153 and a touchdown. Like, he got absolutely cooked in that game. Can't have Troy Brown on the field. So my first guess is going to be DJ Baker. But again, Amir Speed is somebody that's definitely in that conversation. Okay, now to talk about what happened yesterday. Because while the Colts didn't make any moves, again, they were fielding calls for different players. And there were two guys that were coming up a lot. The first one being Zach Moss. And there's a quote here from a team source that I think is important because it kind of indicates why we didn't make any moves yesterday. But this quote says, Zach is a special guy and player. We weren't shocked when calls came in asking about him and the team wouldn't be doing their jobs if they didn't at least listen at this time of year. But at the end of the day, nothing was close to happening yesterday. Most moves that happen on deadline day our team selling low on players, and that wasn't on our mind. So I think that there tells you a lot about what they were thinking, right? They're not willing to sell low on players just because guys' contracts are going to be running out. And there are two ways to go about that. Like, yeah, it'd be nice to have draft compensation for guys that we're not going to sign. But at the same time, in the NFL, these people are trying to win now. So why would you give away Zach Moss, who is currently the NFL's second leading rusher, for what is reported here by Destin Adams as a late day three pick. Okay, late day three pick means sixth or seventh round. There were people trying to get Zach Moss for a sixth or seventh round pick. And that would have made sense if they were trying to get him from Buffalo like we did, right? But since he's been with us, like dating back to last year, you look at what he did in the time he was able to get on the field and what he's done this year, like there is no way we are trading Zach Moss for a late day three pick just because we're not going to resign him. Okay, and I wouldn't be totally surprised if we take the approach that the Browns took when they had Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, and that's what we try to emulate with Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss. So we'll see what happens there when the offseason comes around. But for right now, Zach Moss staying in the building. But then the other guy that was being called for was Kenny Moore who we know if you're on Twitter, you know that the Eagles were calling about Kenny Moore. I don't know who else was, um, but there were contenders calling for Kenny Moore. And the quote here from a team source on Kenny Moore was that Kenny has such a winner mentality, and that is clear to other teams when they watch him play. Multiple contenders called, but like I said about Zach, Kenny is a special person and player, and there isn't a world we were going to let a guy like him out of this locker room for what teams were interested in doing yesterday. 
So again, another situation where teams are trying to low ball the Colts and Chris Ballard wasn't going for it. And I respect it. I understand trying to get something for these guys, but especially if you're going to low ball offers on Kenny Moore, like what are we doing here? You know, and one of these things, you know, all this information coming from Destin Adams on A to Z Sports. And in this article, he mentions that he was told that it was an NFC Super Bowl contender that seemed to have the most interest. So, again, that's probably the Eagles. But at the end of the day, it just didn't matter. You know, Chris Ballard wasn't going to let Howie Roseman do him like Howie Roseman's been doing other people in the past. So, you know, again, I respect it. Um, Would have liked to have seen something get done. You know, I really thought there was a good chance Jalen Johnson ends up in Indy with the news coming out, you know, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning that Jalen Johnson had requested a trade. I thought something was going to happen there. Um, He ends up not getting traded. Colts don't make any moves. We don't upgrade the secondary at all. Um, don't really agree with that approach. Um, I'm also not trying to bag on Ballard like a lot of other people, right? Couldn't have foreseen AR getting hurt. Couldn't have foreseen, you know, Rogers senior getting his suspension. Couldn't have foreseen Dallas flowers tearing his Achilles and Juju Brents having the hamstring injury and us being in the situation we're in who would have guessed, right? Like this stuff is going to happen sometimes. And how many teams in the league, really, like how many teams in the league, when you trade away your top corner, your next top corner gets suspended, your next two top corners are out, like what team in the league is going to have a good secondary at that point? Like, thank goodness we have Jalen Jones, who's been really good as a rookie so far, and we have Kenny Moore. Thank goodness we have those guys and they've stayed healthy. You know, it, it could be much worse. Other teams would be in a much worse situation. But because Kenny Moore's an absolute dog and Chris Ballard had, once again, another pretty good draft. You know, Jalen Jones, seventh-round pick and is out here starting and doing a very good job. So, you know, I don't think it's all on Ballard like people are saying, but I do think um, we could see more. And I think this next offseason is going to tell us a lot about Chris Ballard and if we're ever going to see a change in his approach. You know, people, you got to remember, he also, he traded for DeForest Buckner. He traded Naheem Hines for Zach Moss. And at the time, I don't know about you guys, I thought that we got hosed on that deal. But then Zach Moss comes in and he does what he's doing. Like, yeah, we definitely got the better end of that deal. So, you know, overall, I enjoy Chris Ballard. I think he does a good job. He's not perfect. Um, And again, this next offseason is going to tell us a lot. And this next offseason is going to be the one where I either stay on the Chris Ballard train or I hop off because at some point you got to start to get aggressive and try to win, right? Teams at the top of the league are aggressive and are trying to win, right? The Eagles, one of the most aggressive teams over the last, you know, three, four, five years. And they've been at the top of the league for a little while. so. You know, right now, you know, I'm in a waiting period, a bit of a waiting period on Chris Ballard. You know, I still got his back. I'll still defend him. Um, But that that fuse is running low. We got to see it in the 2024 offseason. But, you know, we'll talk about all that later. We have the Panthers this week. I'll get you guys videos as soon as I possibly can going over the injury reports from Thursday and Friday. You know, currently in Indiana, I have – you know, family members' wedding coming up in a couple of days. So got a busy next couple of days. Don't really know what the schedule's uh, going to be like for the videos and, and when the Colts release, you know, their injury reports and whatnot. But I'll get that information to you guys as soon as I possibly can. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on if you aren't already. I appreciate you stopping by for this update. And until next time, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.